Hello everyone. Today you're going to learn how to troubleshoot device communication issues that result in a device no response message and render the HMI unable to read from or write to the PLC. To begin, I have an application running on my HMI that should communicate with the compact logics that I have here in my office. However, you'll notice that the HMI is displaying a device no response message and none of the objects within my project that are addressed to the PLC are displayed on the HMI. This indicates that there is likely no communication between the HMI and PLC. If you're experiencing a similar issue within your project, please stick around and we'll discuss how to troubleshoot this issue. If certain objects that are addressed to the PLC display while others do not, please watch part one of our device no response series. Now, before we attempt to resolve this issue, let's review the three most common causes and solutions to communication failure. The device driver used within the HMI project may have a corresponding connection guide. This guide is referred to as a PLC connection guide. You can find these guides on our website by selecting the support tab and then clicking PLC connection guide. Within the PLC connection guide search utility, Specify the manufacturer and model of the device used within your application. Then, select the driver that corresponds with the desired communication mode. When establishing communication between the HMI and an external device, it's important to check the PLC connection guide and ensure that the driver lists your device within the supported series section. If the device used within your application is not listed as a supported device, communication may fail. The PLC connection guide may also contain important information related to device settings. For example, the PLC connection guide for the Siemens S7-1200-S7-1500 Absolute Addressing Driver contains an important note on page 5. This note indicates that there is a setting within the PLC software that can cause communication failure when enabled. Therefore, before trying to establish communication with an external device, please carefully read through and implement the information within the PLC connection guide. If you're using an Ethernet interface within your application and the HMI cannot communicate with the external device, the first item that you should check is the HMI's network configuration. The network configuration refers to each component, both virtual and physical, that allows the HMI to communicate with the external device. An invalid network configuration will undoubtedly cause communication between the HMI and external device to fail. The HMI and PLC need to be on the same IP subnet in order for communication to take place. In addition, you need to ensure that the driver within your project has been configured with the correct IP address. If you have verified that each address is correct and communication is still unsuccessful, please check the physical connection between the HMI and PLC. It is possible that an Ethernet cable, router, or switch may be causing the fault to occur. And we highly recommend that you establish a direct connection between the HMI and PLC using an Ethernet cable that has worked without issue in a separate test. While using a serial interface, if the HMI cannot communicate with the external device, please check that the cable has been configured for the pinout of the HMI and COM port used within your application. The configuration of the HMI's COM port and pinout may vary between model. For example, the MT8070IE supports RS-45 communication on COM1, whereas the CMT3072X uses COM1 for RS-232 communication. Another example is that the MT8070IE and the CMT3072X both support RS-45 communication on COM3. However, the pinout is different on each device. This means that if you are changing the HMI model used within your project, you should also review the configuration of the serial cable. For this reason, I typically recommend using a solderless 9-pin terminal block for testing. To find the pinout specifications of any HMI model, please download the datasheet that corresponds with the HMI used within your application from our website, wintechusa.com. If the cable appears to be correct, please check the baud rate, data bits, parity, and stop bits configured within your application. 
Now that we know what to look for, let's identify the cause of this communication issue. To begin, I'll check the PLC connection guide and ensure that the PLC is listed within the supported series section. Next, I'll verify that the configuration of our HMI and PLC project complies with the information and instructions present within the PLC connection guide. Being that there are no discrepancies between our configuration and the instructions shown within this guide, let's check the network configuration of the HMI and PLC. We can find the IP address of the HMI within the HMI settings menu. The settings menu can be accessed via an orange disk in the top left corner of CMT and CMTX HMIs, and by clicking the gear icon within the slide out menu on non-CMT series HMIs. For my PLC, I can view the IP address within the PLC software. It appears that the HMI and PLC are both on the same IP subnet, and the HMI is currently connected directly to the PLC using an Ethernet cable, so we know that this issue is not caused by a faulty router or switch. Now before I change the cable, let's ensure that we've configured the correct IP address within the HMI project. Within EasyBuilder Pro, the PLC's IP address is set within the settings menu of our driver. The driver can be found within the device tab of the system parameters. By double clicking the driver and selecting the settings button, we can see that the IP address of our PLC does not have the correct configuration within the HMI project. By correcting this issue and re-downloading the project, it is likely that the communication error will be resolved. And that concludes part 2 of the Device No Response series. I hope that by following these tutorials you were able to resolve any communication errors within your project. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our channel to check out the latest technical tutorials. Feel free to check out our website as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.